Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the ODPP Cafe. I don't know where you're watching us from. Nairobi is very cold, but this is a very warm welcome to you. This is a show brought to you by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, and it's a show that is meant to sensitize you, to empower you, and to teach you a few of the concepts and all matters on the criminal justice system. Our session is live. So feel free to comment and ask a question in the comment section. We are going to sample some of the comments and, and whatever, anything you put in our comments towards the tail end of this discussion. So we shall, um, a, we shall invite you to engage with us on uh, Twitter at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, that is at ODPP underscore KE, uh, of course on Facebook and on YouTube at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. We welcome you to subscribe and follow us and get to learn about the criminal justice system. So as always, we start with a quick highlight of the courts and a lot has been happening. So I'm just going to mention a few so that we can, uh, we can get on with the show today. And I'm going to start with that one of, um, of uh, Migori Governor uh, Okoto Bado. Uh, his case has been, has been adjourned after the court learned that one of the accused has contracted COVID-19. I know we are on uh, digital, but uh, the accused, um, Penina Auma, has been admitted to hospital with um, COVID-19. So Chief Magistrate Lawrence Mugambi, who was supposed to hear the case, was informed that uh, Auma is in hospital and so the case has to be adjourned. So this case was about Obado and his children who are charged with conspiracy to commit a felony uh, relating to fraud of 73.4 million Kenya shillings in Migori County. So the case has been adjourned because one of those people has uh, COVID. They accused the lady called Penina Auma. The next case is about Willie Kimani, and uh, it is said that the five accused have a case to answer. The four police officers and a civilian accused of killing lawyer Willie Kimani and two others have a case to answer after the court ruled that the prosecution has proved a prima facie case against them. The AP officers, Frederick Leliman, Stephen Cheburek, Sylvia Wanjiko, and Leonard Mwangi were charged alongside police informant Peter Ngogi. Uh, with the murder of Willie Kimani. So they, they have to answer to this. And uh, the, the prosecution proved this uh, to Judge Jesse Justice Lassit, who ruled that after going through all the evidence provided by the prosecution, she found that each of the accused has a case to answer. The defense hearing will commence on September 27th. A total of 16 defense witnesses are expected to take the stand to testify. I hope one of these days we'll have as we'll have a show that talks about sentencing and all this so that you understand how this works. Uh, the other case is about Itumbi. He it is said that he has a case to answer. The former State House Digital Director Dennis Itumbi was put on his defense over the fake letter alleging a plot to assassinate Deputy President William Ruto. Milimani Chief Magistrate Martha Mutuku placed Itumbi and his co-accused blogger Samuel Gateri on their defense after the prosecution proved a case against them so this was also trending sometime this week on social media and you remember that letter that also uh, caused a storm on social so it is found that um itumbi now has a case to answer um in the case the prosecution through anderson gikunda called eight witnesses to prove the charges against itumbi and gateri itumbi and gateri are charged with publishing a false statement he itumbi is also separately charged with making a false a document and reprogramming of a mobile phone contrary to section 84g of the kenya information and communication act wow interesting so this is ongoing and we'll be uh watching to see how this one goes and of course inform you as you follow through with the news so that is as far as the cases uh, uh in the courts uh, just a glimpse of it uh, we don't always cover everything and we have a disclaimer that is not exhaustive. It's just a few just to show you that uh, things have been happening. And, uh, and, and, and once we're done with that, we now go straight into our show. And quite, actually, today is a very exciting day because it is the 28th episode, the 28th episode of us learning, relearning and empowering ourselves on all matters criminal justice system. We started, I think, uh, with discussing the case management system, and we've gone through so many topics, and today's the 28th one, and we keep going. Thank you so much for going the journey with us, and uh, we invite you to keep working with us. So as you get into our show today, it's very important for us to mention this, because uh, as we celebrate our 28th episode, something else also happened at the United Nations General Assembly, the, the 76th UNGA, uh, United Nations General Assembly. The president of Estonia, uh, Kersit Kalju, 
okay, okay. The president of Estonia uh, congratulated the ODPP for, for, for promoting justice through digital platforms. And this was quite interesting for us because uh, it came from a very nice place, especially where the, the announcement was made. And we want to say thank you for all of those people who have engaged with us. And also thank you uh, for the ODPP for taking uh, our, 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 our justice system digital, of course, alongside other actors. So I'll just allow you to watch the video of the president of Estonia and uh, hear what she had to say. My special greetings go to the Chief Prosecutor of Kenya, who has made sure that Kenyan people can turn to the courts and receive verdicts while unable to travel, unable to meet. Kenya is not turning back, because even when travel would be safe again, why should someone take a trip of hundreds of kilometers to be heard? This is an encouraging example. Through the tears we have shared for our lost ones, from the despair and devastation, solutions have sprung, which will enable us to become better, more egalitarian societies. I hope all governments who have seen the benefits of online service provision will continue down this avenue. <laughs> So that was uh, the president of Estonia. He was uh, commending uh, the ODPP team for enhancing justice through digital. So that was really good. So today's topic has been one of those things we've been discussing on social media, on Twitter and on Facebook. And it's about uh, the PTI, the Prosecution Training Institute. And I have guests in the studio. I'm going to give them a few minutes to introduce themselves. But before they do, when we launched the annual report, 2016-2021, uh, there were strategic ob objectives that were presented in the document. So the DPP has a vision to enhance accountability, transparency, public confidence, and quality control. So in seeking to achieve these objectives, the DPP adopted a three-pronged approach aimed at transforming the ODPP into a service that is more responsive to the needs of the Mwananchi. So these are retooling, relearning, and recasting. So relearning is where the office seeks to equip its staff and with the requisite uh, skills, equipment, and uh, necessary for delivery of its mandate within a global context. So that is our discussion today. And before we get into it, I'd like to introduce, I'd like my guests to introduce themselves and tell us who they are and what they do at the ODPP. I'll start with the lady, Karibu Shukri. She's not new to the screen, but uh, Karibu Sana, introduce yourself. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, my name is Ahmed Shukri Ayan. I am a researcher with the ODPP. Uh, I'm also the latest batch of inductees who went through the PTI program and got inducted into the ODPP. So, yeah, I'm among the latest beneficiaries of the PTI. Okay, Karibu Sana. <laughs> um, I'll have to introduce himself. Good morning. My name is Tom Ogwena. Other names as Tom Oguma. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Full name. Yeah. I am by rank senior assistant director of public prosecutions and currently deployed to the PTI. Mm. The Prosecution Training Institute. Prosecution Training Institute. Yeah. Okay, so before we start our discussion, I'll just invite you to watch a video on the PTI. And on relearning, the office seeks to equip its staff with the requisite skills and equipment necessary to deliver on its mandate within a global context. All prosecution council and other staff are accorded equal opportunities for trainings on different uh, thematic areas like terrorism, cybercrime, uh, sexual offenses. Uh, and such like uh, topics. This has been done through the establishment of the Prosecution Training Institute, PTI. Um, for four weeks we have been at an academy where we've been, uh, there are various people who have come to teach us various things about different laws and now here is where we had to bring the practicality to the ground. It's been a very nice experience. I can call it the best thing that I can learn about because it's been very practical. From what you have learned from the induction to here, you require a lot of discipline a lot of tolerance, a lot of professionalize, professionalism because uh, you have to, you are relating with all manner of people, so you have to be professional in everything. Um, I have to say that uh, time, you have to 
to observe your time well, manage your time, so that you can be able to prepare in everything, starting from the time you arrive here to the time you leave. From now going forward, I think I've learned a lot. I think I, I, I believe I can be a good prosecutor from now. F from what I've, um, I've gathered from the courts and um, in practice, I think it's um, prosecution is an art that you can uh, you get to learn each and every day. And provided that you are willing to learn each and every day and accept corrections, you'll be a very good prosecutor. The inductees we have are actually very hands-on. The training which we had uh, at the academy uh, was uh, powerful in the sense that uh, like the, the prosecution council was not uh, uh, green to something like taking a plea or even uh, issues of applications for bail. You could tell that this is somebody who understands. She was even able to even uh, take on a, a witness. We are so happy that uh, the leadership uh, the ODPP uh, did this uh, kind of, uh, or thought about this and put it to practice. <laughs> So that was just a brief video to show you something a bit about the PTI, but definitely we have guests like we've introduced them and they're going to tell us more about PTI. So like all other professions, even prosecutors have their school to, to, to keep enhancing their, their skills and capacity and PTI is one of them. So I'll start with you, uh, Tom. Uh, give us a brief history on PTI. When was it established? Thank you. The formal establishment was in March 2019 by the DPP, but the idea of uh, having the PTI started way back when the prosecution was delinked from the Attorney General's office. So in um, their search for how to establish an autonomous running office, they toured several countries and uh, some of them were Poland, Italy and France, and then they noted that they were having their own prosecutorial prosecutions training institutes. So they came up with the idea that, okay, we can as well have our own. And then they considered the constitution itself, which calls for some standards of conduct and of prosecution. Some of them, just to mention a few, Article 10 on good uh, governance, and even the Article 157, which establishes the office, requires some minimum standards for prosecution services. So in order to realize those, it was felt that training was really necessary. And previously, there was no systematic coordination of training of prosecutors as such, as no existing college was entirely dedicated to training of prosecutors. So that gap was seen, and in order to fill it, the then DPP established or set up a working team to write a concept paper on the establishment of PTI, and that was sometime in November 2014. So they delivered on the concept paper, and then the idea was formed. So in the various attempts to re reorganize the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, it was always featuring that how would it be structured? Should it be a department or should it report directly to the DPP? DPP. Then finally, when it was established in 2019, it was established as a, a department okay. of, on its own, on its own mm -hmm. of the Office of the DPP alongside the other technical departments. Oh, okay, interesting. So you mentioned something about before. So how are prosecutors trained before? How did you become a prosecutor before? Because I think at first they were the policemen, right? They were from the police force. There were two sets of prosecutors. Mm -hmm. There were the lawyers, mm -hmm. and then there were the police. So for the lawyers, what you needed is to qualify as a lawyer to be admitted as an advocate of the Republic. Yeah get employed by the office of the attorney general uh -huh. and then it was just a matter of placement that okay you've been deployed <laughs> to this department if yeah. you happen to be deployed to the prosecution yeah. department mm -hmm. you become a prosecutor mm -hmm. but the police prosecutors were being trained at the dci school somewhere okay. in south b 
they used to have a two month uh, training stint just training them on the basics of prosecution the rest they would learn from their peers already in the field mm. oh, okay quite 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 interesting shukri karibu sana Asante. a recent graduate yes. of the pti <laughs> yeah just uh, for the sake of someone who's pursuing law right now mm. so you finish your law school your 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 ba your undergrad yeah then you go to kenya school of law yes and then now you say you want to be a prosecutor yeah you have to go through pti is that now like a requirement is it a must yeah well when you're doing your undergrad for you to get your llb that is the law degree how to clarify how long is llb uh it depends with the university you go to like the one i went to catholic university there's a program where you don't get any breaks you do three semesters a year so within three years you're done uh, other universities or other programs you get two semesters a year you finish within four years so you are done with your undergrad when you get uh, your degree you then apply to the kenya school of law the kenya school of law is where now you learn uh, one year in class and the other year practicals so in class you're taught about civil litigation criminal litigation different aspects of the legal field even how to manage your business a law firm when you are done with school so it's a class course after that one year you do your exams and then you get into uh, pupillage that is when you go and get attached to a law firm so it it's usually for six months you get now on the ground you get to see what people actually do it's like your shadowing advocates who are already in the field with uh, uh, a vast amount yeah. of experience with them after that there's a holding over period which is an additional six months so you get to learn more so after you're done you get your results if you fast with the council of legal education then you apply you make a petition to the chief justice so that you can be inducted among the whole of advocates now okay. you become a <laughs> member of the yeah. learned society mm -hmm. so once you're an advocate you can apply to the office of the director of public prosecutions after you have gone through interviews and what have you then you are inducted into or dpp the induction process it's like a two-tier kind of process or a three-tier kind of process the first one there's uh because of covid we had an online induction where it was like a scheme uh, kind of course where they tell you about the odpp the different departments within the odpp what the odpp does and also hr matters what have you so you have an idea of what the odpp entails and then you're deployed to various offices within the odpp itself and then you're thrown into the deep end so it's like graduation by fire or something yeah <laughs> so you're on the ground you get to see exactly what odpp does you also get to do some things after that then there's now you're called to now go and do your induction properly at now pti okay that there is where now there are classes on the different departments within the odpp so you get the head of departments head of regions the specialized prosecutors who are very good in their various fields they come and teach you about criminal litigation how is it different from what you learned at case uh, not necessarily because at KSL you're being taught the substantive legal doctrines that you are supposed to know and also criminal procedures how you're supposed to maneuver your way in court with regards mm -hmm. to criminal law but then when you get to ODPP they get to the nitty-gritty bit of it so they tell you there are different departments within the ODPP that de deal with uh, different criminal aspects you get there's the conventional and related crimes formerly known as the offenses against yeah. persons so there are different divisions within that there's the child children yes. division there's the jr mm -hmm. and then there's another department and anti-corruption so there are different departments you get to know and then you, within uh, learning those different departments and what they do even it piques your interest mm -hmm. you start feeling a sense of longing to different yeah. specs of it so and it's also an amazing thing because these are people who are well versed and have been here for years 
So it's like seeing, I usually say it's like being an army at your first BTS concert. <laughs> the musical reference. But basically it's like seeing your superstar coming to teach you. Oh yeah. So these are people you've seen on TV Someone you're dealing with upon, big criminal matter. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And then they're coming to teach you. Yeah. And then they tell you they've been where you are and it gives you a sense of, I okay, can be there too. I'm scared right now. When I went to court, this happened, so it didn't just happen to me, it happened to them also. This is mm -hmm. how they dealt with oh, yeah. it, yeah. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, you go through that process, and that is the first bit of it. And then there's a bit now, there is knowledge within now the criminal procedure, and then there's also the different skills and attributes that they teach you. Mm -hmm. This one is with regards to code of conduct, how you should conduct yourself, decorum, how you should dress, yeah. and things like that. Okay. Yeah. When did you discover you want to be a researcher and not? A researcher I actually discovered back when I was still in school because I always loved researching. research. Uh, yeah, because okay. okay. knowledge is infinite. And the moment yeah. you start delving into research, well, that was just my passion always. So even being an advocate, it's just because, you know, once you're an advocate, you can never go back or anything so <laughs> there's that pride in being an advocate yeah but my passion has always been research, research. i love ah. the power okay so mr tom just tell us what guides pti what is the vision what how where do you want to see pti uh, precisely uh, the vision is to be a world class training and research center for the benefit of the prosecutors and uh, the wider stakeholders in yeah. the justice system. You had mentioned earlier that the PT, the, the, before PTI was formed, there were trips uh, to Italy, to France, and all those places. Is there no PTI in Africa? Any other country in Africa that has a PTI? We can talk of Nigeria having almost a similar, but it is not really that which you can say is exclusively for prosecutors. Okay. It trains prosecutors, but also the judiciary of the Nigerians. Oh. So ideally, this I is think it is going to be the first. Okay, good. Is this where you say south of Limpopo, north of Sijiwot? Those, <laughs> those, those praises people give. Yeah, so you're telling us about the, the vision and mission for PTI. Yes, as I've said, the vision is to be a world-class training center for research and to training for the benefit of prosecutors and uh, the larger stakeholders in the justice system. Yeah. And the, the mission is just to... To train. Uh, <laughs> not to provide the capacity and building through training and research for prosecutors and, yeah. in the, and the larger justice okay. system. All right. So when we started the show, and I think even the video showed a bit of it, the DPP has three strategic approaches, recasting, retooling, and relearning. So where does uh, the PTI fall under these three arts, and what does that mean? Look at, casually, you'd say that it falls under the relearning. Yes. Because, well, it's being a training center, that's where the learning Takes is place. concentrated. Yeah. But uh, if you look at it widely, PTI falls in all the categories, okay. even in the recasting, oh, really? oh. even even in the retooling. Mm -hmm. Of course, how do you retool before you have sufficient information? You need to do some research. Yes. Yes. Researchers are here. Yes, <laughs> and they are part of the PTI. Yes. So once you, I mean, PTI is the department which will be spearheading those researchers on behalf of the ODPP. So somehow they will be there in the background informing them even if they, it is not seen on the surface but they will be doing the background work mm. for the recasting and even the retooling. Okay, so that is retooling. So then relearning, how do you place this as a strategic objective your PTI falls? Um, Relearning is to equip people with knowledge to be able to do things differently so as to achieve the strategic objectives of uh, the ODPP. For example, uh, when it comes to the core mandate of the office, which is prosecutions, the, I mean, the 
these centuries prosecutors are not like the prosecutors of old, where you simply go to court and uh, yeah. just you want a conviction. But now, they are being called to do much more to ensure that uh, there is fairness, there is justice. So you even have to reach out even to the victims themselves and even the, the defense. The defense. Yeah. So long as the ends of justice are met, mm -hmm. and this one's required that uh, you learn, have knowledge, and um, even change of attitude, because you are not simply just going there to present your case in court only. You have to do much more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, it, it's interesting that you mentioned about recasting, and I'm just interested to know how do you fit in PTI and the recasting? Because even as I was coming to discuss this, I was just coming to discuss relearning. But you say PTI falls straight in, under the three. So recasting, where do you place PTI? Yeah, the recasting, as uh, always said, it is uh, revolving around the three C's. Yes. Collaboration, yeah. coordination, and cooperation. Mm -hmm. So in, um, let's take, uh, for example, the coordination. PTI will be providing those facilities for synergies, like synergy rooms, whereby when the other departments in the justice sector want to go and harmonize yes. some activities, there is an atmosphere away from the work environment where you'll be able to do those things yes. in peace and disturb from the yes. as it's of the office environment. Yes. And even the researchers, you, you may be told that now we need to, we think of doing this as a way of cooperation, but uh, we are not sure whether it will work. Can you do even some survey, even some, so of yeah. course you already fall into research. Into research. And you need to test yeah. whether the, the things you put in place are working. Mm. So who would be spearheading it? Spearheading it? Is our researcher yeah, is here yeah. <laughs> to tell us that okay that thing which you are trying to implement it is not producing the desired result Results, yeah. so you need to change the yeah, approach yeah. so PTI is will be there and everything nowadays is based on research so you're in the right place yeah <laughs> Shukri we know we started this thing without saying where PTI is we are just talking about PTI so maybe someone is watching and wondering mm -hmm. PTI go happy where is PTI PTI acquired um, his own premises located somewhere in Laurentia. Those who have been to the Lions Eye Hostel, mm. it is somewhere next there. Okay. Yes. Mm. Do you offer accommodation for students? Yes, um, but at the moment, the, there is a lot of innovations going on, and uh, it was inherited from the police. Mm. The, it used to be the senior police staff, senior staff of the police department that used to train there. So we found when they had developed some accommodation units, some of them were felt that were not uh, good enough in the modern age. So some of them will soon be demolished, but there are some which uh, are currently being finished for accommodation purposes. Yes. So soon you'll be able to accommodate students. Of course, that is the plan. That's the plan. The grand plan. Yeah. Yes. So, um, Shukri, please talk to us about some of these courses that have been that are offered at PTI. What did you learn at PTI? Like, be quite specific for somebody who would want to come to PTI. Mm. So, uh, since we, are, we were, the purpose of uh, the training itself was to help for easier transitioning within ODP because when you come in as advocates, there's a mentality that whatever case that you are handling, you must win, win, win. Mm -hmm. But when you get into prosecution, it's with regards to the criminal justice system. You're not supposed to win. It's not all about winning because at the end of the day, you're the guardians of criminal justice. What you want at the end of everything is not only to look at the interests of the public as a whole, but also the victim and also make sure that the rights and the dignity of the suspects and accused persons are also being upheld. Because when you talk about winning, Shukri, we all want to win. 
when you see cases <laughs> when you see cases out there by the DPP, we say we are all expecting him to win, so that when it is thrown out, mm. people start asking, "Bona jindi, bona mushindi these cases." So when you're telling me it's not about winning, you really need to bring it out clearly. What is it about then? At the end of the day, it's not just about the number of convictions that you have. Mm -hmm. It's all about has justice been upheld? The process within acquiring that justice was it fair? Was it transparent? Are you being accountable? when you're trying to meet the ends of justice. Mm -hmm. Because um, the, the mission of the criminal justice system is not just mass incarceration. We are in a modern era where there's progressive prosecution. Mm -hmm. This entails uh, things like diversion, plea bargaining, yeah. and these are things that we were taught mm -hmm. during the PTI So these program. are things you learn? Exactly, ah, because okay. like something, for example, to do with diversion, it's with regards to at the end of the day you want when someone has done something wrong you want them to atone for whatever it is that they've done so for example say a juvenile someone who is 13 years old they don't have a parental figure in their lives they were hungry they got into someone's shop took a piece of bread you don't throw them, them in jail. jail you don't push for conviction for theft because you just want to get convictions yeah. It leads to mass incarceration where the prisons are even overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You ruin someone's, a child's life before they even begin living. Mm -hmm. They already have a criminal record. At the end of the day, you want them to atone for what they have done. Diversion gives you that opportunity. Mm -hmm. You sit down, negotiate, and we are being taught with negotiation skills, litigation mm -hmm. skills, and also collaborative skills where you work with other stakeholders, external stakeholders and agencies to come to a mutual agreement that not only helps the society, but everyone that is involved. Mm -hmm. So you can come to negotiate and say, they stole this piece of bread, why don't they work off whatever it is that they stole? In the process of them working for the person to whom they had stolen from, this can end up being his mentor and they say, had you actually please, at the end of the day, you see that is better justice yeah. than just getting a conviction under your belt. So it's more looking for retribution, for, for restoration. There's not, rehabilitation, yeah. mm -hmm. restoration, there's yeah. punishment. There's a lot that has to deal with mm -hmm. the criminal justice mm -hmm. system than just conviction and incarcerating people. So you're learning that now, you know? Yeah. We used to think people, Mbona Indi Jela, Mbona Indi Jela, Mbona Indi Jela. Exactly. So this and is different even now. us, when we came in, I remember myself, I was just like, I can't wait to be part of conviction, sending people to jail. Yeah. Because as an advocate outside, you know, you know, and that is what you want. Yeah. But when you get into uh, the ODPP and they start training you, you see there's more to the criminal justice system than just getting convictions. And even on convictions, if you rally too much and get obsessed with convictions, you lose the whole ethos of what makes everything just because yeah. you will not be upheld to the standards that you need to, such as uh, the high standards of candor that we now have to be upheld to where you have to be transparent with everything. If there's testimonies, you have to yeah. share it with defense. the defense and such things. Mm. So we are being taught all these things within PTI that there's more to prosecution than just going to court and convicting people. But then we've been lost there for so long, even as non-legal, non uh, I mean, just common monarchy. Because mm -hmm. even we look at the DPP's office, we, we measure the success against conviction. Yeah. Conviction rates. How many have you convicted? How many have you convicted? And what we are taught at PTI, quality versus quantity. Mm. Because what's the, what's the purpose of getting 100 convictions when the quality of those uh, prosecutions was lacklustre. Mm. There's a famous ju just judge who said it is better that um, one innocent person is it one innocent person goes free God, a hundred guilty people go free than one innocent person That's being incarcerated mm. because that is not justice mm. you know mm. so that is what we are being taught at pti mm. modern prosecution mm. the quality you have to be diligent in your work you have to be professional you are upheld to higher standard where there's nothing like conflict of interest you cannot call yourself a prosecutor when you have a stake in for mm. example a profile you know mm -hmm. it does not make sense <laughs> 
<laughs> such things yeah. don't make sense. Yeah. So we are being taught not only just you be robotic prosecutors, but also when you go outside, how are you representing the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions? Yeah. You also taught about things like right now there's a shift in the world. There's something to do with mental health. It's such an important it aspect is, yeah. of every individual. You, we and are every institution. Yeah. Exactly. We are all human beings at the end of the day. Yeah. When you are in prosecution matters, you deal with criminal matters, some things are so savage, some murders are so traumatic. Yeah. And sometimes... Like I know I wouldn't, de- I know if I was ever a lawyer, I wouldn't deal with children. Because I think I'd be crying every day. And <laughs> in those files, you have to de- you see everything, you have to know everything. Yeah. You have children at home. You have a victim who has been molested. Those things really tend to affect a person. Yeah. So we are taught that men accept that mental health is actually an issue. Yeah. Don't be ashamed of it. We provide the office provides such services. Yeah. When you need to talk to someone, there's someone. There, there's someone you can talk to. You can talk to your colleagues. There's a camaraderie within the office. You can talk to your colleagues. Mm-hmm. There are professionals that can be provided for you. And also at the same time. We are taught, um, there's a point that I had in my mind that has eluded me yeah. right now. Yeah. But we're also taught don't overburden yourself at the same time. Because you are. Exactly. Yeah. And also, like, you have to learn how to kneel before you can <coughs> lead. So when initially when you're coming in, you know, as advocates, there's that bit of arrogance you can actually, as long as you're an advocate, you can try any yeah. matter in court. Yeah. So you're taught you're still young to this let the seasoned Come ones slowly. <laughs> teach you yeah. so even if they give you small jobs don't take it as a small job that small thing small job that you're doing at the end of the day it plays a very big part and role in the outcome that you're going mm-hmm. to get mm-hmm. so at the end of the day it's all about camaraderie teamwork coming together to execute the mandate of the office and not just execute it but execute it well to the highest standards possible and how many were you in the first quarter in the first, we were 49. 49. Yeah. Okay. So is it PTI only about the new, uh, the newcomers, or do you also have uh, or intentions to also retrain the people who have already been in the system? PTI is for training all men and staff employed by the ODPP, mm-hmm. and the plans are also there mm-hmm. to train other people so long as they meet the basic uh, criteria. Yeah for training. So it only happens that at the time of the formal establishment in 2019, mm-hmm. there had just been employed yeah. a new set yeah. of prosecutors. Yeah. So we used uh, the chance to showcase mm-hmm. that this is how things shall be. Mm-hmm. So it is not just associating it with the people who are newly employed. Yeah. And uh, over the last two or so years, mm-hmm. We even had other trainings, oh. yes, some of them online because of COVID reasons, yes. like on decision to charge, mm-hmm. and even on wildlife crimes. Oh, who are you training them? Prosecutors? Existing prosecutors. prosecutors. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the existing prosecutors are being trained mm-hmm. as well as new ones. As well as new ones. Oh, ah, yes. okay. That's, that's quite interesting. So um, I wanted to know if it is only for prosecutors. Can I, as a non-legal person, find a course to do at PTI? Well, um, <laughs> at the moment, yeah. we are just training prosecutors. prosecutors. But um, curriculums are being uh, developed for non-prosecutors as okay. well, so long as they are people in the justice system. Yeah. Yes, okay. that is why we say that we offer our capacity building oh, for yes. the justice, system. entire justice system. Oh, okay. So right now we've developed curriculum for the diploma in public prosecutions. Okay. And that is why we give emphasis on training of the prosecutors at the moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, How long is a diploma? It's supposed to last one year. But, uh, but, but, <laughs> but you see, so it, because it is something novel, mm-hmm. We are also going to pilot some sections of it okay. to say that uh, because it is organized in modules, mm-hmm. a module can last, I mean, a several number of hours which you must have for you to finish that module. So a module is based on a thematic area 
like if you say wildlife crimes that can be a model okay. so we are going to select some modules and test them because sometimes when you're planning you may say that this is supposed to take this number of hours this is these are the desired outcomes but practically on the ground you find either it may be too insufficient that they become idle or you find that it is an overload so piloting would help us uh, revise the diploma program but currently as constituted it is supposed to last one year and it is not one year in class entirely mm -hmm. part of it would be on the job training oh that's good to know. yes i was imagining in class again for the a practical year. aspect yeah yes it's quite long i think i was thinking it's, it's too long too long too long you talked about curriculum development and of, of late if you're a parent like me then you have been interacting with cbc a lot and we are disturbed by curriculum development and there are discussions going on. So maybe my question would be, who's developing your curriculum? I will not. <laughs> you mentioned CBC. Yeah. Let, uh, it the, got us interested let, in let, curriculum development. Let, 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 let the, the others, experts on that. The others, the Minister of Education, yeah. do it, deal yeah. with it. Yeah. I'll deal with our curriculum. Yes, yeah. I would say mm -hmm. we developed it ourselves. We at PTI, with the technical support of the experts. So at the beginning, we approached the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. They guide us, guided us through developing the curriculum framework. Mm -hmm. So you begin with the curriculum framework that this is what we want. This is the kind of the topics we want to be covered. These are the desired outcomes. So once that is done, then you thereafter populate it with content. So Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development guide us through that and they help us compile it. But the input was basically people from ODPP, okay. nominated from various departments. It's very good to know. <laughs> yes, from all departments. There was we, there was engagement. Yeah, you know, you know in board. ODPP because it is structured in departments based on thematic areas of persecutions, yeah. like anti-corruption. So if you only take people, right now I'm deployed in PTI, but I may not have been in the Department of Anti-Corruption. Mm -hmm. So I may not know the nitty gritties of the things in that department. Mm -hmm. So people get nominated from a cross wide section of fair representation of all ODPP yeah. uh, departments and divisions. Mm -hmm. And um, once the framework was developed, mm -hmm. with the assistance of uh, our development partners, UNODC, we thereafter, I mean, they contracted consultants for us, one on legal and one on the non-legal. When she's talking, I mean, Shukri is talking mm -hmm. about mental health, mm -hmm. that was covered in uh, by the non-legal non -legal consultant. Mm -hmm. So they would tell us that these are the areas, these are the things that you need to do, but the content it is you to really generate because you know the structure of your office as we give you just the technical assistance that this is a gap. You haven't populated this ah, area. Yeah? Okay. You need to give me information so that we feed it here. Yeah. So we had several sessions, mostly in 2019, most of 2019, and uh, by the time COVID restrictions were being imposed yeah. around March, yeah. we were at that crucial stage mm -hmm. where the content was already there we were merely revising them mm -hmm. so through some online sessions we've been able to revise them during the year 2020 and a draft towards the end of the year 2020 we had a draft which we could say that this is now good for piloting mm -hmm. and uh, it is uh, if things go well to be launched very soon yeah i wanted to ask you when the launch is so when do, you, when do you foresee that renovation that PTI will be completed? Well, um, I want to really wish to comment on when, mm -hmm. because technically, you know, renovations is normally the domain of administration department. Yes, so, you wouldn't know when. so there are some things which 
they have their own deadlines yes. with the people prepared to do it. Okay. What I can say is what I see on the ground. What do you see on the ground? That uh, the Mutkot building. I wanted to ask you about the Mutkot. The Mutkot, Mutkot building yes. is at an advanced stage. That is what you can see. Of on the construction. Ground. Yeah. Finishing not yet, but of advanced stage of construction. Yeah. And uh, the renovations of the classrooms, the synergy rooms, and the officers is uh, almost complete. I would say uh, 90 to 95 percent. Almost there. Yes. Oh, good. So, Shukri, tell us, you are the 21st century prosecutor. Mm -hmm. You represent that person. Mm -hmm. What is a moot court? And why is it important mm -hmm. for us to even talk about a moot court here? Mm -hmm. um, as you know, uh, active prosecution is when you go to court and you go through the court process procedural process and all that, how you conduct yourself in court, etc. So moot court helps with one building confidence and also it gives an what environment. What is a moot court? A moot court is a, how do I call it, like a court that is not actually a court, but it's like, it's like a class court. Okay. Yeah, it's a court but in a class format. Okay. So it's used for teaching purposes. So it teaches you how you're supposed to, con the court decorum, how you're supposed to conduct yourself mm. in court. It gives you the confidence to be able to speak up in court. Like even with PTI, we, were, we went through a child advocacy program, only that you know, there was no moot court at that yeah. time. But otherwise, it was basically almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. So how to produce evidence in court, how to engage with well, the victim. Away the from a moot court, where do you learn such? If there's no moot court, did you learn to be a prosecutor? Like, did you ever go through a moot court? Of course. Only that um, right now, the ODPP through the PTI mm -hmm. wants to make it look like the real thing. Mm -hmm. And so before that, it was just like. a classroom? So, previously, there were no... You know, she's a 21st century she prosecutor, is. but she for, for us... Them, yes. I but, for, from you. but for us... Yeah. The old guards. Mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the old guards. Yes. Yeah. I've served it into something. Yes. Wow. So mm -hmm. I I qualify. Respect. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for us, um, mm -hmm. we'd go to, you know, the training program of becoming advocate has gone a lot of transformation. Mm -hmm. As we went through it in the 1990s. And that time it was just one year, and the classes were only for three months. Oh. And we were not going as far as Karen. Mm -hmm. We were just somewhere, I mean, Valley Road, mm -hmm. just next somewhere in Valley Road here. So the three months we go to the classes, and mostly they were in the evening, because oh. we were being taught by the advocates in practice mainly. Oh. So they would prefer to come in, in the, the evenings. Evening, yeah. Just a few would come during the day. Yeah. And they were just basically classrooms, mm -hmm. but uh, the proper—I mean, the proper simulation of a court atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We were spending more of our time in the courtroom itself okay. because you'd be attached to an advocate mm -hmm. the first nine months. Mm -hmm. So. When you are in the, with the advocate, you always go to court with him. Mm -hmm. So you are learning practically from him. Okay. Otherwise, we were having some moot court sessions mm -hmm. at the university, okay. which we were calling the third, the third semester of a year. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, they were just in the classrooms themselves. Mm -hmm. So there were, were no proper structures as such, which we are called moot court. Mm -hmm. They were okay. just rooms, rooms created. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's, that's quite interesting. So maybe finally, how is this meant to... No, you are talking to us about the moot court. Yeah. Have you been to one? Uh, back in my undergrad days, mm -hmm. we, our school, we had competition, moot court competition. Yeah. Even it was within the school and also mm -hmm. inter-school moot court competitions. I didn't get to the inter-school part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I participated uh, in, in, in campus, mm -hmm. the moot court. So it was basically even us just a class yeah and then where the teacher is usually their podium 
the law, the legal teacher, he used to sit there and then pretend to be the cases. judge. Yeah. And then your comrades are there. So we, it's all, ad, it's all about adaptation. If you cannot uh, execute it at that moment, you just make a make-belief kind of court. Mm -hmm. As long as the aesthetic is right, yeah. then you're all good to go. Mm -hmm. But now with the PTI, the envisionment is that it will actually be like a, a real, real court. court setting. Yeah. And that will actually help hone skills because these are skills that you tend to sharpen with time and yeah. also hone them in. Mm -hmm. So it will really help w when it gets to the child advocacy part mm -hmm. of prosecution. Mm -hmm. I would want to chip in yeah. just to support what he's saying. Yeah. For us who went straight from school to the law firm, mm -hmm. to the school of law, and then to practice, mm -hmm. by the time you are admitted as an advocate, you developed enough confidence mm -hmm. within the fair court. Yeah. Then I, we witnessed a different category when uh, we started having the parallel programs, yes. degrees. Yeah. These were people who were already working, mm -hmm. and then they went back to university, mm -hmm. acquired the law degree. Yeah. They didn't have sufficient time to develop that mm -hmm. confidence. Mm -hmm. So when they came back to the work environment, mm -hmm. they applied to be designated ah. to be the lawyers, yes, yes. some of them to be prosecutors, mm -hmm. and um, even civil litigation. Mm -hmm. So me, that time we were still in the AG chambers, all of us, including prosecution. Mm -hmm. So the experience was not very nice. You'd give them a file that, okay, because uh, normally it is always the nature of a lawyer to be ambushed with mm -hmm. even some matters which you did not anticipate in the morning. <laughs> and sometimes you also find that the people who were to handle them were having some other challenges, mm -hmm. so they've not reported to work. Mm -hmm. So if you're heading, you're supposed to redistribute that work to the team that you have. Mm -hmm. So you say that, okay, so and so, so and so, these are now your files, go handle these files today. You so and so. Yeah. Then you'd see a marked difference with the people who did not go through the transformative uh, process yeah. away from the moot court life <laughs> yeah. experience. Okay. They would say that, you know, me, I'm not going to court yeah. because I don't have the experience in that. And some of them, when they go to court, they, they tremble. Mm -hmm. They don't even know how to begin. Mm -hmm. Not that the matter is technical, but they just feel intimidated. Yeah. So to remove that intimidating atmosphere, mm -hmm. I think it has been a good innovation that we actually have a moot court mm -hmm. building which resembles the actual court mm -hmm. when we are training them. Yeah, but you're making work very easy for this 21st century prosecutor. No, because it can be very intimidating. But yeah. life has been, I mean, the entire... Mm -hmm. yeah. The life has just transformed itself to be good for them. Soft life. <laughs> because even in means of transport, nowadays they don't yeah. have to walk Instant much. Instant things. Yeah, so it's I think... To when you're yeah. in class, uh -huh. these are familiar faces you're used to. In your class, you're just being told and vision that this is a court. Mm -hmm. I remember my first time going to court. Mm -hmm. It was very intimidating for me. It was such a big old building. There were these uh, seniors who are just staring at yeah. you. There's a judge who's not even smiling. He's looking mm -hmm. at you. Can you get on with your mat? My voice went high pitched. I, I felt like collapsing mm -hmm. at that particular point in time. Mm -hmm. So I think with the Mutkot, even with the trial advocacy program that we went through, it gives you a certain kind of because uh, it's a it's a positive reinforcement kind of learning yeah. where you stand in court. You, you really don't have that confidence. You're like, I hope I don't mess up and all this. Mm. So when you start talking, and then they're really encouraging you, like, yeah, you're on the right track. You can actually do a good thing. So you feel confident. You're like, but hey, this I is, can do I this. can do this. <laughs> At some point, I was even like, I don't know whether I should transfer from research and go to prosecution. <laughs> <laughs> so child advocacy really helps with that because we can honestly say, since the world is evolving, we cannot always just be like people must learn things the hard way. If we can make things easier, it's like a it's true millennial <laughs> who wants a soft life. <laughs> ah, no, 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 no. I don't agree with you. I think you should just go through what Tom and uh, the old guard went through. So that you I, I would recommend it. that. <laughs> it was hard. No, not that uh, it was uh, bad. Eh? Yeah. 
But when things change, you have to embrace change the positive way. Yes, very important. Because my father tells me that when they used to go to the school mm -hmm. in the 50s, even going to, the, to take a shower, they would always borrow some wooden sandals from their colleagues. Not everybody has sandals. Yeah. So if he's talking about their time, their time, and yeah. they were in primary school, they were writing on slates. Yeah. So I wonder, with the coming on of pens during our time, and yeah. now the laptops and even yes, we even forget how to write. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Should we really burden people when the horse has bolted? Mm. We need to embrace change to and. Up. That is something which we at VTI also emphasize. Yeah. In every curriculum, in every training, there is a component of managing change. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So that I consider it part of the change in the positive direction. We don't say that they like easy things, but <laughs> it is that things have changed. Mm -hmm. If we can produce better results mm -hmm. using lesser effort, why yeah. not? Yeah. Right now, if you give me a grey book. I'm sure you guys use it back in the day. It's a what very, is a grey book? It's, it's a compilation of Relevant. different laws. Oh. So it's a very heavy book. <laughs> and I can just carry a tablet and I wow, log into Kenya, <laughs> Kenya Law Report. Yeah. You see, it even makes things easier. Yeah. I just go to the search engine and go to the particular section I want. Mm -hmm. Instead of making the whole court wait mm -hmm. while I'm busy shuffling different pages to yeah. look for whatever it is. That it's all about expeditious justice. If we can do things easier, then it's easier for us to expedite the justice that you're going to get at the end of it. Wow. And mm. you're being taught to be innovative, especially the head of PTI, Madam Roda. She's... Um, very exposed, she's very knowledgeable, and she loves things to do with innovation. So she tells us always embrace the modern aspect of doing things. Mm -hmm. Don't when you're moving, move forward. Don't go don't backwards. Go back. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's very. And Victor has made it quite easy for us. Mm -hmm. So then, finally, um, I want to just know from independence to 2019, we didn't have a PTR. But now we have a PTI and we are telling the people out there that you have PTI. How is this meant to benefit me as a Mwananchi that there is PTI? Do I, does it help my life in any way? Yes, um, it depends on the, the lens with which we look at yeah, it. Yeah. To the extent, as Shukri has been saying, that um, the modern prosecutor is different from the old prosecutor. How do we produce and maintain the standards? I mean, how do we ensure the standards from practice are modern, innovative, and uh, serves the modern purposes? Because even crime itself is evolving. Yes. So would you want a prosecutor who, when it comes to cyber crime, he says that, you know, those are matters of computer. Look for a millennial <laughs> to do that. For sure. <laughs> so we need a prosecutor who is well-rounded yeah. in the emerging crime right. areas. Yeah. There are what some others are called complex crime areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you don't train, mm -hmm these prosecutors, mm -hmm. so that they can prosecute those matters effectively. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that uh, justice would really not be met, the standards of justice? Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is for the wider public. Yes. So when you talk about, as an individual, sometimes people talk about what is in it for, for me. me. We yes. used to say that. Yeah. And the majority sometimes talk about what cash can I get from it? But, uh, <laughs> To move away from the cash from pieces, money, yeah, but the benefits, you know, yeah. prosecution essentially, we don't even we are not even paid money by the victim. I mean, uh, the, the victims that we prosecute on behalf of yeah. the government pays, and it is to serve public interest. Mm -hmm. So, so long as we are able to satisfy the standards, the requirements of the public interest test public interest, mm -hmm. then it means we are serving the entire population and every one of us, of mm -hmm. course, belongs to the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if we serve the public interest, mm -hmm. we equally serve your interest, even if not individually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Most to my that extent, step, but yes. so that training <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is beneficial. Okay. And then there is the cost effectiveness of whatever we are doing 
the taxpayer won't want so much budget eh, which is not properly utilized by government agencies acting on their behalf. So if you have a specialized institution training people on the effective way of doing something which will end up in saving costs to the taxpayer, and the taxpayer also going to benefit from uh, less taxes allocated to that. Mm -hmm. You see, those are more of academic angle yeah. issues, mm -hmm. but they are practical realities if you look at it from the wider picture. Yeah. Yes. Good. And also, mm -hmm. PTI is more than just about sitting in class and coming up with curriculums. Because mm -hmm. within the research department of the PTI, they also, we delve into what are the new emerging crimes within Kenya? How can we better solve them? Are there gaps in the law? Has the law catered for these kinds of crimes? Can we make proposals to parliament in order to come up with policies mm. that will better help us solve these new issues yeah. that are coming about? Yeah. And also with regards to looking at the prevalent crimes within different demographics. Kenya is a big country. Different areas within Kenya have different uh, types of crimes that are more prevalent yeah. in some areas more than the others. So within the research department, that is also what they do. They look at uh, what types of crimes are within the different demographics and how the, re the different rates yeah, that yeah. are there. And with that in mind and the results that come up from it, there is then the training of specialized prosecutors. Mm. So if one area, if one region, the prevalent crime is sexual assaults, then there will be specialized training of prosecutors. From that region. Exactly, mm. and de uh, deployed over there. Mm. And there's also, they also come up, uh, the, they look at uh, the new standards, the emerging standards internationally for how people are supposed to carry themselves, quality of work, mm -hmm. and etc. You see, that is also bringing up the quality of prosecution. If the quality is good and you even get a conviction, mm -hmm. then even if an appeal is brought, mm -hmm. it can be quashed and you won't have to pay tax money again for us to come again and appeal and say, okay, we dropped the ball on this one, but we still have, <laughs> you see. So yeah. it even helps with that one, right? And just uh, to add also, still on how it, it benefits the public. Mm -hmm. You know, the ODPP, you may be aware, has been engaging the ordinary citizens where they live. Mm -hmm. That outreach program. They like this one. This is an outreach program. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we actually physically also go out there yes. to engage with them. Yes. They tell us their concerns. Yes. And we also tell them, this is the way to go. Mm -hmm. There are people who have never heard about uh, diversion. Yeah. And uh, they are just willing that, oh, now that I, uh, you mention it, where can I get more information, more information yeah. and help? Mm -hmm. So these things are being mm -hmm. spearheaded mm -hmm. through research, of course, mm -hmm. research forms a big component, mm -hmm. on where should we focus, the strategic focuses of engaging with the public. Mm -hmm. Like she has identified one key area, the sexual offenses. Mm -hmm. So it is just people. PTI is uh, the headed research mm -hmm. that identifies such thematic areas. But yeah. this time, we need to engage the public mm -hmm. more on this. And this is the way to engage them. We just don't go there. And what is the feedback? How do we get this feedback so that we use it to benefit them? Mm -hmm. So for it to have impact. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Yes. We have to come to an end of this show. Quite interesting. I also want to go and see the moot court <laughs> and listen to people presenting their cases and also also very interesting as to, as to why as an individual or a citizen PTI should be of benefit to me. I should be interested in the growth of uh, an institution like PTI. So uh, just a few comments uh, before we close. Uh, first of all, there's a guy called Lawrence, Lawrence Dinger. Thanks, Lawrence, for tuning in. He wants to know the contact of PTI. How does he get to PTI? How does he reach PTI? Um, at the moment, we you can physically visit Loratio, yeah. the PTI premises, and um, of course through the ODPP website, mm -hmm. there is also information. The telephone contact. And mm -hmm. 
we are at advanced stages of compiling what we call student handbook, okay. which contains all information mm -hmm. somebody would need, including how do you reach, how do you make contact, if you want to be admitted, what qualifications do you need, and if, I mean, what courses are being offered, and when, and, when, and uh, if you're already admitted, how are you supposed to conduct yourself? Mm -hmm. What facilities are available? Would I be able to get accommodation? What about meals? What about taxis? Mm -hmm. How do I get my way around the town? And, and if I happen to be that naughty one, how will I be dealt <laughs> with? <laughs> the millennials. <laughs> yeah. not, not only them, but yeah. that is human nature, wherever yeah. people are. Eh? Mm -hmm. So it is comprehensive. It is more or less like if you are standard uh, student handbook like you'd find in any university. Yes. It contains everything. Yeah. So right now we cannot start distributing it because there are, when we will be talking about accommodation, yeah. And somebody says, but in your student handbook, you said the accommodation is available. Yeah. Of course, we know it is going to be available, yeah. but uh, we've made provision for it. Only that we have not started distributing okay. the handbook, yeah. but all the information one will need is already provided yeah. for, and it will be uploaded mm -hmm. as soon as it is approved. Hopefully when we launch, right? Which I think is very soon. In a month's time, we are supposed to finalize it, mm. that student handbook, okay. and it will be ready for distribution. Wow. Yes. Okay, so Lawrence Dinga, you had, uh, there is, you can visit PTI in Loresho, or you can visit the website, the ODP website, and find some uh, direction as to how to reach the PTI team. But uh, all information is there, and there will be a launch soon, hopefully, and uh, the student handbook that has all the information will be distributed as well online and I think physically. Yes. Yeah, so um, Monica says, uh, thanks uh, Tom and Ahmed. This is an enlightening discussion. Good, good for you. And then somebody else called Samuel says, amazing topic today. As Alvin Toffler said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn and learn and relearn. Precious. Good? Yes. I mean, you're in <laughs> It's time we move, we move forward. Yeah. Thank you so much, Samuel. So like I said, I just want to come to an end of this show today. Thank you so much. Definitely when we launch PTI again, we shall invite you. The 21st yeah. century lawyers, <laughs> plus the old guard who are in It's been change. so short. It has been short? <laughs> because I had that a lot is, to say. I know, right? So much more it it feels yeah. sometimes when you come to the show that uh, it's going to be too long. And then when you start talking, we discover an hour is very short, mm. but you've been at it for an hour. <laughs> so I want to thank you for coming to the show. We will welcome you again to do this, especially as you launch. Part two. <laughs> Part two, but three, there's the launch, there's the handbook, there are those courses, and I hope we'll engage more on this whole uh, discussion. So uh, thank you everyone. I'd like to come to an end of the show. I thank you so much for tuning in, those who've tuned in. We will still engage with you on our social pages. You're welcome to comment and ask questions. You're welcome to visit PTI and see what's going on there and see the moot court like i'm interested in seeing it and see everything that is going on at uh, the loresho campus it's a whole campus i think a pd version was shown earlier on the show but you can definitely visit the odp website and see how the, the the 3d version looks like so clearly we're moving into the 21st century we have 21st century prosecutors like shukri here who are embracing change and are running with it and it's about time we also run with it so in a bid to enhance justice in a bid to, to, to actually provide justice to the people, there's a lot of learning, relearning, and unlearning to be done. And this is going to be done for the ODPP at PTI. So once again, thank you, and uh, God bless. Have a blessed weekend, and tune in next week to see what we'll be discussing. Thank you so much.